are no more complaining people their lives are changing we're flying high creating a complaint free world no more no more Today we want to jumpstart satisfaction, the origin of the words, or more importantly, where it comes from in our lives, and why it is something that so many of us struggle with. Ask yourself before I even begin, and click an answer below, how often do you feel truly satisfied in your life? I can tell you that for myself, this is something that I've really, really struggled with over the years. And I realized that it comes from a feeling of incompleteness, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I remember uh, reading an interview back when Michael Jackson's Thriller was the biggest thing on the planet in the 1980s. And he and Quincy Jones were being interviewed and Quincy Jones was talking about how great the album was and how perfect it was. And Michael Jackson kept just sort of wrinkling his nose as if, and then he said, no, we could have done it much better. We could have, and he said that my problem is I never, ever feel satisfied. So it's a, it's an interesting dance between satisfaction. We have this idea that if we feel satisfied, we'll no longer be motivated. And yet if we're driven by fear, it's hard to stay motivated. And if we're unsatisfied, we're driven by fear because we're trying to fill an emptiness that is within us. The word satisfaction is synonymous with the word fulfillment. Now take that word for just a moment, all right? Full filled. Full filled. Are you filled full? And the chances are most people are not. We've been sort of taught that this idea of satisfaction is a bad thing and that we should always feel that if we, can, we, if we feel satisfied, we will stop. Do you understand what I'm saying? If we feel satisfied, we will stop. But we're not going to stop if we're driven by a higher purpose. If your purpose for doing and being who and what you are is bigger than who you are or bigger than you, then you're not going to run into this issue of feeling satisfied and then stopping or not moving forward in your life. Now, it is true that dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction is often the first step towards moving us forward. So let's say for an example, I remember, and I've used this metaphor, this example many times, but um, I was very obese as a child, very obese as a teenager. And I remember lying in bed, 287 pounds and having trouble breathing because my belly was so big. And I remember feeling so dissatisfied, so dissatisfied. And I let that drive me. I, I, that drove me to go to Weight Watchers to begin to lose weight. The challenge was, what I found was that I had to be satisfied along the way with not doing as well as I would like or I would quit. Here's what I mean. So 287 pounds, I go to Weight Watchers, I get weighed, I'm looking at it going, wow, that's, you know, a little more than a tenth of a ton. <laughs> I weighed quite a bit. And as I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, um, I'm very dissatisfied and I want to move forward. Now that first week, because I went on a diet for the first time and I was a big young man, I lost seven pounds. So I was very satisfied. I felt very filled full, fulfilled. Okay. I felt very fulfilled. Now the following week I went in and I'd only lost one pound. Now, because I compared what I had done before, rather than saying, wow, I was down a total of eight pounds. I felt like I should have been down seven pounds every week, you know, in another five weeks, I'll be down. I'll be done with this thing. The challenge is to feel fulfilled, not because of the result. And if you are multitasking, come back because you need to hear this. To feel fulfilled in your exertion. I've discovered that satisfaction often comes from appreciating our exertion. The exertion that we put forth, the effort that we put forth. And that is what we need to begin to celebrate. We celebrate when someone wins a tennis match. We don't celebrate when someone 
loses a tennis match. What we don't celebrate either is how many thousands of hours that person had to prepare and uh, exercise and learn and be coached, etc., just to even play. And it's that exertion that we need to celebrate. We still get caught up, I find, in that they're there, like I'm ultimately going to have it all. I'm going to have everything worked out. I'm going to have it all figured out. Their life has never worked out that way, so it's never going to. Does that mean we can't be satisfied? No, we can and we should be satisfied. Not complete as in I'm done, over with, but satisfied with our efforts, satisfied with who we are, satisfied with our support system, satisfied with what we have overcome. I'm reading a wonderful book by my friend Guy Winch, and uh, it's called How to Mend a Broken Heart. And he talks about how People don't tend to appreciate and understand when someone loses a pet as much or loses a relationship as much as if they lose a primary family member. And he talks about how that that giving a fo- forth the uh, support from other people creates a, a feeling in the person who is being supported of feeling full, of being satisfied. So in a lot of ways and a lot of times, we can give others that feeling, but if we don't feel it ourselves, we will never, ever, ever get there. When I saw that interview with Quincy Jones and Mike, Michael Jackson, I remember thinking, this is the biggest album ever. The Beatles never did anything like this. It's huge. And he is dissatisfied. And right there, that also made me feel a little bit better. Because if you tend to feel a little dissatisfied, you're normal. You're normal. What I'm saying is that when we begin to be grateful for what we've done, when we begin to be grateful for what we have, and more importantly, when we begin to be grateful for who we are, we can begin to feel fulfilled. If you think about it, satisfaction, the opposite of fulfillment, is empty empty. Most people walk around, myself included, for many, many years feeling pretty darn empty. And the way we end up feeling that way is not because we feel empty. We think empty. We think that we are not as good as other people, as smart, as handsome, as calm, as cool, etc., etc., etc. We're normal. That's what I keep wanting us to understand. We tend to think that we are unique in ways that get us into trouble. And we also tend to think that we are, and we tend to forget that we are very much like other people. So let me ask you a question. What gives you satisfaction? And it's little things. What gives you satisfaction? One of the things I want to do this evening is reap plant all my potted plants. I notice they need to be replanted and it really gives me satisfaction to put them into a bigger space. Does getting up and getting yourself to walk, anytime you can do anything to overcome your ego's natural proclivity to not do anything, you can and should feel satisfaction. We always have this balance. So if you want to get up and take a walk, your ego will often remind you or try and tell you that, ah, you shouldn't, you don't have time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it is in that exertion. Remember, I said exertion and satisfaction come together. When we exert the control over our ego and say, yeah, I get it, and I'm still going to go out, and I'm still going to go for my walk, or I'm still going to go swimming, or I'm still going to do yoga, or whatever it is, the satisfaction comes many times in overcoming our own limited, fearful, lazy self. How about that? That's where we can get satisfaction. Simply by being a better version of ourselves in the areas of our lives that are important to us every single day, working to be a little bit more of who we want ourselves to be, not who other people want us to be. And that is where satisfaction can come from. I was thinking this morning, uh, the Rolling Stones, who got their name from... uh, 
uh, Muddy Waters. <laughs> All I could think of was, was his real name. I read his autobiography. His name is McKinley uh, Morganfield, but Muddy Waters. And Muddy Waters actually did a song called um, Can't Be Satisfied, which Keith Richards loved so much that he changed it and came up with Can't Get No Satisfaction. I think the challenge comes in that we're trying to be satisfied externally and we never, ever, ever will be. Externally, we're like a sieve, not a bowl. My mom used to tell this little poem. Round like a bowl, deep like a cup, yet the Mississippi River can't fill it up. What is it? It's a sieve. Externally, when we're looking for satisfaction outside, we will never be satisfied. Never, ever. I live down here in Florida, as many of you know, and a lot of people have boats. And it's amazing how many people, if they have a 35-foot boat that they love and everything, but as soon as they see a 36-foot boat, then all of a sudden, they don't like their 36-foot boat. You see a lot of men walking around with beautiful models and a lot of women walking around with very handsome men down here. And yet so often men will then see, and I see men do this more than women, another woman walk by and all of a sudden that's where their attention and all of a sudden they're comparing themselves. Whenever you compare yourself as inferior, you cannot be satisfied, whether that comparison is to someone else or within your own mind. Take that in within your own mind because that's where all dissatisfaction happens and satisfaction comes from appreciating loving and celebrating who you are and what you have and to realize that you are full you were born full nothing you do in this life is going to make you any more full you don't have to show anybody anything, create anything. All you have to do is enjoy your life and that will give you fulfillment. I was telling someone a joke the other day that I had heard and the joke goes, it's not a joke, it's more of a statement. It's a, it's a story and that is that someone dies and goes to heaven and when they're walking up to the pearly gates, uh, St. Peter is standing there as, as is God and Jesus and everything and all of this person's family members who had passed previously and they all rushed up to this person and said, did you have fun? Did you have fun? And I love that as a measure of life. Fun doesn't come at the expense of others. Fun comes at the um, joy of serving others. Fun comes from serving others, not taking advantage of or hurting other people. So there's nothing wrong with doing what is happy, what makes you feel like is fun. I'm stumbling a little bit this morning. But whatever makes you feel happy, that's what will fulfill you. Don't compare yourself to others. <sighs> Today, I want to invite you to try and feel satisfied, to not measure the distance between how far you are and how far you have to go. So often, I have this enormous to-do list every day, this big to-do list, and I'll go click, 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 knocking stuff out all day long, right? Getting stuff done, making phone calls, calling clients, talking about future speeches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, working on all of this. And then at the end of the day, I often find myself looking at the to-do list and my ego, because I'm tired at the end of the day, goes, Ugh. look at all the things you didn't get done. Not look at all the things you did get done, but look at all the things you did not get done. And that's when I have to go back and read my checklist. So I invite you to read your checklist. Read the things you have accomplished. Celebrate how far you have come. Appreciate how far you've come knowing this is life. You're going to keep moving. You're going to keep coming. You're going to keep trying. You're going to keep changing. That's life. And in feeling satisfied with who you are, that means not feeling empty. Do you understand me? Satisfaction means full filled, full filled, not empty. In finding ways to make yourself feel full, Life becomes more enjoyable, enjoyable. Life becomes more blissful. People respond and react to you better. Oh, and you're happier.
So work today to become more satisfied by appreciating how far you've come rather than looking at how far you think you've got to go. I can tell you that having lost 104 pounds, that there were so many times when it, I did not celebrate how far I had come. When I'd lost 40 pounds, all I thought about was how I sometimes how I lost had to lose 60. And that's when the people at Weight Watchers were always like, are you kidding me? Shut up. Celebrate what you've already done. So I guess that would be kind of my big inspiration today. Shut up. Celebrate everything you've already done. Because you've done a lot, and you're pretty spectacular, and you're going to do a whole lot more. Before I say goodbye and we move on to our complaint-free meditation program, I want to invite all of you who'd like to to say a comment or uh, any sort of a question that you'd like to have, anything relative to fulfillment in your own life that you'd like to say. I see that Laura Osteen Rhodes has joined us. Good morning. And Heather Ellis is here as always. There's Heather. Good morning. Hillary Clifford says, good morning, everyone. Great to see you. Arlene Pittman, great to have you here. I find fulfillment fulfillment through productive action, aiming for inward accomplishment. I can accomplish outward goals, but still not feel fulfilled. That is absolutely true. Ed, well put. Good morning from Smoky, Oregon. We're getting a lot of people in Oregon and California. Bless your hearts, all of you. Thank you, Will, from sunny South Florida with a little rain shower now, says Sherry. Michelle says, I get it. Thank you. Bless you. It is a shift awakening in our mindsets and being aware of our thoughts, says Arlene, and what we speak, then making the effort to switch that seat thinking. It's challenging, but bam, so worth it. Worth it. Awesome message, says Chris. Uh, Arlene, I want to comment real quick on something you said, and that is that um, this, I can't think of the name of it, So, but I'm reading this one book, and it talks about when we start getting those negative thoughts in our head, to literally scream shout, uh, scream stop in our own heads, to shout the word, stop, stop, and then force ourselves. I struggle my entire life with lying in bed and my ego would take over and would tell me all the negative bad things about me, which there aren't many, and it would tell me all the terrible things I've done in my life, again, not many. And it would just replay them over and over and over again. And what I've literally had to do is I've had to have a different game plan. I literally have something else I want to replace it with when that happens. But first I shout the word stop in my own mind, just to make my own mind myself aware of the fact of what I'm doing and to exercise blatant control over your own thoughts, which is the only way to heal your life. Heather says, such a timely message. I struggle with celebrating all of the unplanned things that I manage throughout my day. I get that. You know, the other day, um, let me tell you one more little quick one. And oh my goodness, we need to say goodbye. But I want to tell you something that happened the other day. I was working to get to this National Speakers Association virtual meeting. And as I was preparing, I was running into all kinds of um, technical problems. Uh, the air conditioning stopped working here in my home. Um, the uh, uh, several other things just stopped working like right that I needed right as I was about to do this. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is none of this is planned. I thought I had my day all set. I thought everything was good. I thought everything was great. And that's the way life goes. So when life throws, not if, when life throws you some challenges today, do like Heather, do like me, do your best to stay calm and to work through them. When you stay calm, you're able to think more clearly and come up with better options. And more importantly, you feel more satisfied because I invite you to try this and see if you don't indeed feel more satisfied and celebrate the little things. When I was done, one of the first things I had to do was to go and tell somebody, wow, I had all these things and I stayed so cool, so calm, and I got them done. In other words, I allowed myself to feel satisfied and so should you. Enjoy today and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. No more, no more I change it with high and high, creating a complaint-free world no more.